Look at all of you guys staying right till the end. And if I could sing, I would do a song of We've Got Here. But we are just about now to close the 2018 Zero Conference. So for those of you who are not sitting, I invite you to take your seats. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Now the thing is, I am going to have to leave in the next few minutes because I have to try and get back to Dublin. No such thing as a direct flight between Vienna and Dublin at this hour of the evening. Um, but I would really, really like just for two seconds to say a few thank yous, if you don't mind. I really want to acknowledge the extraordinary work of our interpreter and translation team up here. Can, would you mind, I know everybody's exhausted, but these guys have worked so hard for three days. Can we please put a round of applause together for them? I mean, Anna, yeah. Amazing, amazing team. Oh, 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 am I in trouble? Can I say something? I want to congratulate the interpreter from Colombia because he's there all alone, working the whole day through. And I really appreciate his, his performance. And I want to say, take care of your health. Can I just say, that is why we love the Zero Conference. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, can I also say to the team of the technical people down the back and here up the front, can we give them a round of applause, please? I only crossed my lines two or three times. I also want to say a big thank you to the whole of the Zero Project team. Uh, Martin, where is Martin as well, our social media guru? Ma Martin, get up here. So Martin wants me also to make an announcement for you, is that all of your videos, uh, well the award winners videos, are now up on Facebook with subtitles, is that correct? Uh, yes, they should be on, on the Zero Project Facebook page. And if you have sent us the, your Facebook page name, then the page should be uh, tagged in the text and you should get a notification so that your uh, site is tagged in the video so you can get your video. If you don't have your video by next Monday, please write to office at project, uh, Zero Project Org and they will kill me for it. But please do it. <laughs> Okay, big round. I thank Martin for everything he's done, all this great social media. Oh, oh, one more thing, one more thing. Hold on. I'm sorry. I have one little extra uh, present for you. We created a badge which you can use for your website and your social media. So it's a Zero Project badge, uh, which says you are the winner of the Zero Project Award 2018. We will send them in the next days to you via email. And you can do whatever you want with it, okay? Have fun. Thank you. And also along with Martin, there are a lot of people who have been doing a huge amount of helping who've been behind the scenes with Doris and her team at the reception desk. I just want to say, this is a very small team who have made an extraordinary thing happen over three days and all the work that's gone into it. And I just think that is real dedication and commitment and they are the Zero Project family. So can we please give them a massive round of applause as well? Yeah, they're amazing. Um, and before I thank um, Michael and Martin, I want to thank all of you so very much. This is where I kind of always get emotional. Um, thank you for allowing me be the bossy woman that I am. And uh, thank you all of you for your support these last three days and the kindness. So many of you coming up and asking me, was I feeling okay and, and was I well? Dr. Frank Hoffman gave me some fantastic drugs yesterday, so I'm feeling an awful lot better. Um, but for me, um, the most important thing is this is part of my family. Um, and those of you who don't know my story, um, I was born with a disability to which I only discovered I had when I was 17 and I hid it for 11 years. Um, and when I think about that, I was 28 years old when I finally came out of the closet, how much I missed by not being part of my tribe of one billion people and my family for those 11 years. And I love this family very, very much. 
and I feel like I fully belong. And I think like every single one of us in this room, we want to create a world where each of us uniquely belong and our unique difference is accepted and each of our potentials can be reached and those dreams that we each have can become a reality. And I think this group of people, all of us together want to make that world better, but just every single time I'm at zero, I just feel a little bit stronger about me. So thank you all so very much for being so patient with me, for allowing me run up and down and being crazy and mad, um, and just for being here with your full hearts, um, hearts and your souls and all of your energy. We're amazing, we are just amazing. So, um, <laughs> So I, I want to spend uh, just a very special thank you to um, three gentlemen. Um, it's Wilfred, Michael and Martin Essel. Um, they always have me here and it means an awful lot to me for I continuously are here and they're so patient with me. But these three gentlemen are the backbone. Martin is the founder, Michael and Wilfred have made this conference possible. And I just want you to give them the recognition that they deserve. Look what they have achieved all together. This has been a brilliant, brilliant conference. I think it's been the best. And I just think for a moment, can you please give them the recognition they deserve? Okay, I'm obviously very tired because I'm going to start to cry. So I'm now over and out and I am leaving the building and I hope to see as many as you I can next year for 2019. Thank you so much, dear Caroline. Uh, and before I say thank you to you, I would like uh, you to give you an overview of our uh, team uh, and they have done I think a very good job in organizing, in researching, in organizing the conference, uh, in feeling all of us uh, pretty comfortable I hope and therefore I ask you to come here to the stage, all of you together and I will ask you to give them also a, an applause and I would like to say thank you to all of you. Uh, um, Martin, you are also part of the, of the Zero Project team. Tom, Tom Butcher, uh, Mrs. Saupe, uh, our representative in, in Japan, our representative in New York, Please all come to us so that we will celebrate together uh, and uh, have a warm thank you, not just, uh, not, just uh, not from you only, but also from me. I really want to thank you all uh, for this amazing event. And as you certainly know, uh, now it's better. Uh, as you certainly know, uh, it was the 10th anniversary. And at this anniversary, um, uh, I, will, I, I want to um, donate two prizes. And one of these prizes uh, I will uh, give to um, Caroline. Thank you so much uh, for moderating. <clears throat> for moderating uh, this uh, conference for the seventh uh, time. And we prepared <clears throat> a sculpture. Oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. <clears throat> so it's to, the, to, the, to, the, to the people. <clears throat> so it's a, it's, it's a, it's a wooden... It literally looks like uh, the, the three leaves of the zero plant coming out of a wooden bowl. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you so much. And uh, I would like to 
give another sculpture to Michael. Thank you so much for helping us, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. <clears throat> Ooh, yes, and um, uh, Caroline, I wish you a, a, a good fly back. Thank you so much for moderating this this year, but please come here next year <laughs> and the years after. Okay, you, you bought me, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now it's the turn of uh, Michael. Uh, I, I, I would like to, to give it to you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Martin. I'm really honored be awarded with this special prize, thank you. And I'm directly moving into our final session and I ask all the people on the final panel of this closing session to come on stage. It's Mary Bartolomeucci, uh, Regina Cohen, Amanda Gibert, myself of course, Olga Jensen and, and Mark Trigoff. Please join me on the, on the stage. Is that really me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so finally, thanks for your patience. We are coming to a, a highlight that we prepared for months and weeks quite intensively. What we did was we had a careful screening of all the practices and policies that have been selected this year. Um, and we looked at it from a very special angle. We said, this is the final session, the concluding session of the Zero Project. Um, you have had, had enough of uh, only, visual, only visual and text information so far. We concentrate now on very easy, very simple solutions and very tangible, very usable innovations that have been implemented in, in, uh, in, uh, to create accessible cities and, and create urban developments. So we created a video, and this video consists of um, 10 um, innovative practices and uh, cities and um, municipalities, regions that have implemented outstanding features. And what you will see now is a collection of this video. Don't expect that this is the great solution and the, un the universal design final uh, implementation that you will ever see. We, we quite deliberately chose solutions that are down to earth, that are easy to implement, that are non-expensive, and that from our point of view are universally applicable. So I ask the uh, technicians now to start with the video. We will interrupt the video when we have representatives of, this, um, of these models here on stage. And I uh, will stop the video then and we'll ask you to come in. Uh, I will ask you to briefly introduce yourselves and then we have a one or two questions, question and answer, and then we move on to the next model. So please, let's start the Accessible City video. The Accessible City video is a compilation of innovative practices and policies from around the world. We are proud to exhibit some of their successes in this video. Accessibility Directorate of Ontario 
The Integrated Accessibility Standards Regulation includes five standards. Design of public spaces, employment, information and communication, transportation and customer service that aim to remove barriers and help Ontario reach its goal of an accessible province by 2015. Measures that have been taken range from courtesy seating in public buses to adjusted stop buttons that are accessible for people using mobility devices. To providing customer service for people with disabilities. To beach accessibility by using mats. Mary, you're representing the province of Ontario here. Could you give us a brief introduction of, of yourself um, about the overall strategy that these glimpses are part of and uh, also what you're up to it, uh, what are your next big, what is the next big thing? Thank you, Michael, uh, and thank you. Uh, good evening or late afternoon. It's Mary Bartolomucci from the Accessibility Directorate in the province of Ontario in Canada. And I am so privileged to be here uh, with everyone here. There is such amazing work that's going on around the world. We're quite proud of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act because it has been quite the groundbreaking legislation in Ontario and in Canada um, that really has changed the lives of people with disabilities and I would say uh, and all uh, people with abilities in those five areas of uh, daily life. Um, you, you saw some examples of transportation, uh, the design of public spaces where we uh, ensure that people can enjoy their beaches and their water's edge. Um, we have uh, information technology available for those that are in um, employment practices to make sure that they can actually be employed in um, meaningful jobs and uh, that everyone receives the uh, goods and services that they uh, have the right to receive through accessible customer service, not only by public organizations, but by the private sector. Anything special that you want to mention that what's um, your next big project? Yes, uh, so we have five standards uh, and we're embarking on the development of two more for uh, accessible health care and accessible education both in the K-12 and in post-secondary and I think that's quite uh, amazing work that we'll be starting to work on because there are lots of areas uh, that still need to be uh, worked on uh, th with, uh, with the AODA so quite uh, exciting over the next couple of years. Thank you, Mary. So please now let's move on to Rio de Janeiro. City of Rio de Janeiro. The Federal University of Rio de Janeiro has produced an accessibility guide and is using it as a tool to increase public social participation. Measures that have been taken range from accessible volleyball courts, wherein the height of the net and the size of the court are adjustable, to carpets placed on the beach for mobility device users. In a museum, maps and art are made accessible for the visually impaired using tactile maps, as well as tactile art. A ramp has been built into a botanical garden, making it accessible for mobility device users. Sinks have been lowered to be accessible for mobility device users. And train station platforms are built to be level to trains. Thank you. So, Regina, could you give us uh, a brief introduction on, on yourself um, and uh, an, an insight into the strategy of the city of Rio de Janeiro? Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, oh, you cut it a lot, but uh, the city of Rio de Janeiro is living a very great urban transformation mainly because of the last events of the World Cup 2014 and the Olympic and Paralympic Games 2016. And uh, many things happened in the city. We changed the port area. We did many solutions for accessibility in the city. And I try to show the museums are becoming more accessible also with tactile maps and other things. They are not there, but the beaches all around the country, not only in the city of Rio de Janeiro. And uh, this is uh, a small part of a big work, a big project, 
We are doing the Pro Access Group at Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, we exist for more than 25 years and there is a lot of uh, projects being done and now, as Michael said, uh, the Virtual Accessibility Guide. This is uh, our important project for the moment. But I, I need, uh, I could talk a lot uh, because 25 years is uh, too much time and too mo much projects, schools, museums, and many other projects. But I need to mention that this video could not be done without that. Where is she? Uh, Monique, architect. Where, you, where are you? Yes, wake. Uh, she was my student, my scholarship student, and without the aid of Monique, it was not possible to do that. We worked together, and we are working together now. She is an architect now, and we have many plans, many projects, and many things to do in Brazil and mainly in our city of Rio de Janeiro. And that's what I have to tell you. Uh, as I told, 25 years, I could talk more, more, and more. Thank you, Regina. We are now moving from uh, Brazil to South Africa. The South Africa Public Transport Network Development. The South Africa Department of Transport has developed a national strategy which includes universal design to guide cities in providing accessible public transport systems. Pavements have been raised in order to be level with the bus and its ramps. All accessible buses have designated seating that have safety belts. The buses have step-free access to the stop buttons and exits. Buses also include an automatic fare collection system that is translated into braille and has enlarged text. Minibuses are equipped with platform lifts to provide safe curbside boarding. Thank you. Amanda, please introduce yourself. Uh, what, what's all behind these few glimpses that we saw and what you're up to next? Thank you very much, Michael. Um, my name is Amanda Gibbard. I work for the National Department of Transport. Um, we have a public tra transport strategy that says that um, public transport must be 100% accessible. Um, that isn't the strategy that I was involved in, um, and nor the accessible transport strategy that came out of that. Um, my um, colleague, Kibbe Manana, was responsible for developing that part of the project. And then she found me to implement it. So I'm doing my best. Um, and it's um, extremely rewarding to have been able to win this award because we didn't think that we'd done very much. And um, we know we have got so much more to do. Like um, my colleague from Rio said, there's just so much to do, um, particularly because South Africa is a country of, of separation and segregation. Um, of people for any different, every different reason. So this is a project which brings people together. It's some of the first public spaces where you've seen people of mixed um, race and um, people with disabilities being able to be accommodated. There's people with disabilities who've been waiting 17 years or more since the constitution um, so that they can catch a bus or catch some form of public transport in dignity. Um, we've done research with people with disabilities who would die because they, if they can't have access to public transport because they can't get to hospitals. And we're working with a minibus taxi industry which is violent and um, dangerous. So women are not safe and um, they're the people who then run these bus systems. So it's quite an amazing transformation. There's not one city that's running at the moment where somebody hasn't been shot for um, saying that they would work with the municipality. 
And that's really scary. And I just think that it's, it's such a big job. Um, so that's really what's happened so far. We've started four of these systems. We've got another uh, nine more to do. Um, I hope that nobody else dies as a result of it. Um, we're aiming, we've got one of the highest um, rates of, of road accidents and pedestrian fatalities in the world. I think we're number six. So we're planning on making the pedestrian environment an awful lot safer. Obviously, we have to if it's going to be universally accessible. But this is a big job. Um, so there's plenty more work to do. Um, I was saying in one of the other groups, Michael, that we've just had some interaction with aviation and rail, which seem to be our next major challenges, because the idea is that all <coughs> transport will be accessible and safe. And I hope that we'll be able to attract everyone to come and visit the country and to be able to see it as a transformed country with, with, with transport that everyone can use. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you also. Deserve some big hand. <laughs> so now from South Africa to France. Grenoble. The French city of Grenoble began to address accessibility as early as the 1970s. 80% of public spaces in the city centre are accessible, as well as 100% of all tram stations. Accessible housing has been developed, including a range of features, from accessible bathrooms to button-controlled locks. Brookfield Zoo. Based on the principles of universal design, the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago has made its facility easily accessible, as well as providing accessible transport and tactile exhibits. Paths have been constructed to be wide and flat, and tactile animal statues have been built for the visually impaired. The buildings have been made accessible for mobility device users, through wide ramps and wide automatic doors. The zoo offers safari tours using minibuses that are accessible through its ramps and include companion seating. Thank you. So, Mark Trigloff, you have developed this concept. Mark, can you give us a little more background on, 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 this, on this interesting concept? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, Brookfield Zoo is uh, a pretty large zoo if you've ever uh, gotten any information on that. It's about 200 acres, and we have about 2 million visitors a year. And when I was there, they were doing a renovation about two-thirds of the zoo. So we were kind of looking at the concept of how you think about the visitors at the zoo are from a toddler to parent to grandma and grandpa who are all coming together, and how we can make the zoo more friendly for them for being able to get around. So obviously we looked at many things related to universal design. We were fortunate enough it actually got featured on a CD called Universal Design Exemplars uh, from the Center for Universal Design. And so making sure that uh, not only walkways but exhibit, exhibit uh, tree was uh, accessible. Uh, one of the things that's very interesting, we formed an advisory group representing different disability organizations and we had a, a focus group of both blind and low vision kids and adults and that's where we developed the concept of these statues that are throughout the zoo. And these are life-size statues. The statue there is actually of Samson the gorilla. And when he got his annual checkup and when he was uh, uh, asleep, they actually took cast molds of him for the uh, artist to be able to create that statue. So it's, it is very accurate from size to how he actually looks. So that was something that was replicated with uh, many other uh, animals as well, dolphin, turtles, giraffes, and many other ones. And then also, too, just trying to think along the lines, uh, not only like the trams for wheelchair accessibility, we also did things related to assistive listening devices as well. So people, any kind of uh, uh, narration that was going on, it was going to be easier for them to be able to hear the information as well. So this is something that uh, it went so well. I have my own company now that we are working throughout the, the country for zoos, aquariums, museums, but also a lot of park and recreation areas as well that we're trying to incorporate universal design, go above and beyond the ADA standards. Anything in particular that you want to share with us about your 
concrete plans for the foreseeable future? Oh, well, um, I think one of the, the things that's uh, most interesting, doing a, a lot of work with the uh, association of zoos and aquarium, we're looking very closely at service dogs in a zoo setting, live animal collections, because it's very different compared to taking a service dog through a building or through a mall or a store or something like that, because several animals actually react very strongly to a dog as like uh, a predator or something that they need to fear. So we're working very closely to try to balance between uh, individuals that have a service dog and how they can safely go around the zoo but also we have to look at protecting the animal col uh, collection as well because there's animals that will react very aggressively towards the service dog. So that's probably one of the more interesting kind of things we're working on. Thank you, Mark. So we're in the middle of um, more outdoor activity and we move on now to Denmark and Norway. Musholm. Musholm, based on the principles of universal design, is a recreation center with room and space for differences. Their hallways are wide and have a continuous hand railing. Entering the building is made easier due to the flat and hard surfaces that lead to the wide automatic doors. Their indoor facilities, such as their bathrooms, are accessible. The handles are within easy reach of the user and the height of the toilet can be easily altered. One can independently travel through the building with the use of door opening buttons located at a height that is reachable for everyone. Telemark. The county of Telemark made their outdoor spaces more accessible through universal design with its main focus on walking trails. Their trails are wide, flat and have a hard surface so that mobility device users can easily travel independently. The hard surfaces are helpful for better grip when on wheels or shoes. Other trails have a wooden surface, also beneficial for grip. Rails are located at the side of the path to ensure maximum safety for travellers. So, Roger, could you tell us a little bit more about the, the background and the, the strategy behind, uh, behind this uh, great project and this great accessibility pathway? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> uh, we have had this uh, as a project in Telemark, a county in Norway, since 2012. We think it's uh, very important uh, <clears throat> to, to, uh, to stimulate physical activity for all. There is an expression of uh, sports for all, but uh, physical activity is what we need everyone. <clears throat> and uh, one of the simplest things to do is to do these uh, trials outdoor. People get in touch with the nature, with the weather, and they are close to where people live. They can use them as a, um, in daily, uh, daily, and they can use them for leisure. And we are participate. We are. Um, we are, uh, together with all the municipalities, we are working on the county level, but it is the municipalities, the local governments, who are responsible for each of the trials. Um, we have had this as a project. We want to continue this. We see that this is uh, part of our normal job, to stimulate physical activity for everyone and to get people outdoor. Uh, you told me, Roger, when we uh, talked about this, that uh, the, this uh, uh, food pass has become as an attraction in itself because it's so 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 beautifully designed. Hmm? Mm. Yeah, I see that uh, on the pictures. Yes, um, I think uh, the most important is the persons living there, the locals in each municipality. But uh, I'm working at the county level, and I visited the municipalities, and I see that. Uh, Every little trial is an attraction. They are different, but uh, also tourists can uh, use these uh, trials. Thank you, Roger. And now we finish with uh, three um, outstanding uh, buildings uh, from Scandic Hotels from Sweden, Central Bank of Ireland, and uh, the YMCA from the USA, whose representatives had unfortunately already to leave. Scandic Hotels. 
More than 13 years ago, Scandic began its journey to make its hotels more accessible for people with disabilities. Throughout the hotels, there are tactile floors for the visually impaired and adapted furnishings and spaces to fit everyone's needs. One can even find cane holders throughout the hotel. Rooms and bathrooms are also accessible, including many features such as adjustable beds, hooks and peepholes, extra spacious bathrooms with its necessary features within reach. The Central Bank of Ireland. Based on the principles of universal design, the Central Bank of Ireland has made a new office facility fully accessible. The grey strips on the stairs, based on the Buildings for Everyone standard, are visible when going up as well as when going down. There is a continuous handrail on the stairs that is lit as well as in a contrasting colour. The floor finishes of the bank can help define a walkway and encourage safe access for everyone. The walkways are also broad to ensure easy circulation. The signage in the facility is large and contrasting, making it easier to read. The countertops in the restaurant are built so that people in mobility devices can come up to the counter as close as possible. The Central Bank of Ireland offers a variety of workspaces and different furniture to meet all kinds of needs. The location of all equipment in the bathroom are within easy reach of the users, as well as colour contrasting to the wall. Mary Free Bed YMCA, Progressive AE. Using the principles of universal design, the Mary Free Bed YMCA was designed with everyone in mind. The facility serves as a model for all future YMCA buildings, both locally and around the country. There are zero thresholds throughout the entire facility. The pool is accessible for mobility device users through a step and a continuous railing. The individual can therefore enter the pool independently. The fitness equipment is also accessible. For example, a wheelchair can simply pull up directly to a weight machine. Everything in this facility has been thought through, from kitchen counters to the indoor track. The track is wide and its lanes are in different colours, helping people to stay in their lane. There is also a continuous yellow railing throughout the entire track. Thank you for your attention and we hope that you were inspired by this video. We would especially like to thank the Central Bank of Ireland, the South Africa Public Transport Network Development, Progressive AE, Mary Free Bed YMCA, the Accessibility Directorate of Ontario, Scandic Hotels, Telemark County, Musholm, ACT Services and the Brookville Zoo, the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro and the City of Grenoble. We will make this video available via our website uh, and also via social media. Thanks to everyone who contributed, thanks to everyone on stage and a special applause also to Alice who is sitting here in first row and has helped us produce this, this big chunk of work for us. Thank you everybody. Thank you everybody and we come to the real finish of this, the real concluding of this Zero Project Conference now. I'm asking on stage to share the, the uh, farewell and the uh, f forecast for, for next year. Share with me, ask on stage Mr. Hiro Shibuya, Shibuya from uh, Nippon Foundation and Mr. Hart Vogel from uh, the Magistrats Directorate of the City of Graz. Please come to me on stage and thank you.
So we're almost done. It's just time to conclude the session and at the same time look into the future, into the next months. Um, I'm welcoming here two people on stage who um, I ask specifically to join me here for the forecast. Um, let's start with you, Hero. You have some important information to share with us of the plans of the Nippon Foundation also related to the Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Thank you, Michael. And uh, <clears throat> before I say anything about it, I just wanted to compliment uh, Martin and Michael and the uh, team of Zero Project. Uh, I must confess, uh, I've been meaning to come to this conference, but this is the very first time. I am absolutely, absolutely impressed and, 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 and absolutely fantastic. You know, we have so many conferences and you often get slightly cynical about, you know, talk to talk kind of sessions. But this is one of those very practical oriented and result oriented uh, uh, gathering. I'm very, very actually therefore honored to be given this opportunity to, um, to share with you a um, little bit about what the Nippon Foundation is planning to do in connection with 2020 Paralympics in Tokyo. We plan to have a, essentially two major events. One is a conference, a tentatively titled Persons with Disabilities and New Economy. The goals of the conference is to establish and promote economic and pro business cases for people with disability. It's based upon the assumption that private sector has been the forefront of shaping and influencing the market forces supported by enabling public policies. While conferences takes into account lack of access to productive assets, opportunities, as well as stigma and other social culture poverty barriers. It will focus on building a new body of knowledge that can more effectively align market demand and supply and economic pro-business policies. It will also take into consideration long-term trends like the future of work, shared gig economy, powered by science and technology. And therefore, tentatively, we call it disabilities and new economy. Conference will be organized by the Nippon Foundation in collaboration with World Bank and, of course, with the Zero Project and other groups and institutions, and supported by a diverse group of experts with the unique experiences, backgrounds, and disciplines, including data science, economics, public policy, impact investment, innovation to develop new information and insights, as manifested in this very conference, that would help influence the market dynamics for people with disability. We will also implement stakeholder engagement program to build a community of interest to advocate for, amplify the process finding recommendations to business and policy leaders. We are in discussion with World Economic Forum with a hope uh, World Economic Forum will consider the, the subject of disability and new economy as one of their global initiative programs. The desired outcome of the conference is to deliver a set of analysis, insights, and actionable recommendations based on evidence-based, truly credible researches that frames opportunity case and accelerates enabling economic policy and business investments in people and disability. Another one, uh, if you could take a look at screen, is a global arts festival of people with a disability, which would involve thousands of participants in Tokyo in 2020. 
we are organizing in cooperation with the UNESCO, Asia Pacific uh, Development Center for Disability, and VSA, Very Special Arts of Singapore, a festival called True Colors. This is as a precursor to the global one we are planning to organize in Tokyo. And in, in actually, uh, next month, 23, 25 March in Singapore. The festival will bring together some of the world's foremost artists and performing talents with the disabilities, as well as unknown but truly talented artists with a multifaceted celebration of talent. This festival of music, dance, and arts will feature an international conference, outdoor festival of inclusion, community outreach activities with the overall objective of empowering people with disability. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do some promotion of our activity. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, Harry. We are happy and proud to be somehow part of this um, great uh, vision of, of the Paralympics 2020 in Tokyo and happy to be of service whenever and wherever you need us. We are also happy that we are forming closer cooperations with the city of Graz and uh, Martin Heidvogel, the director of the magistrate of the city of Graz, is sharing now some visions that are related to making Graz more accessible. Please, Martin. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, dear Mr. Martin Essel, I'm very pleased uh, that the city of Graz has been invited to address a few words to you at the conclusion of this really wonderful and, and very impressive uh, conference. I'm here on behalf of the mayor, Siegfried Nagel, who would very much like to be here today. For health reasons, however, it was unfortunately not possible for him to come to Vienna. My name uh, is Martin Heidvogel. I'm the director of the magistrate of the city of Graz and as the highest official directly subordinate to the mayor, I'm responsible for the efficiency and legality of the city administration. The city of Graz has a long tradition in striving to make the city and its many facilities accessible. As early as 1985, we set up a, de a department for barrier-free construction in our town planning department. Since 1995, we have been advised by the Disability Advisory Council, and since 1997, the city of Graz has had its own disability commissioner. In 2014, the city of Graz was the first city in Austria to adopt a municipal action plan to implement the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. What we have learned, many of the, many of the achievements on the way to a barrier-free city are due to two factors. First, you need to build awareness where practical awareness is really needed, primarily for planners, architects, and of course, our own staff. Secondly, accessibility must be addressed in the first planning phase, when different interests can be considered without making costly changes to a project. Accessibility is therefore an important topic in the city of Graz, of topic in the city of Graz in urban planning, in architectural competitions, and in all new developments of public spaces and public buildings. Now, the city of Graz has a special opportunity to make accessibility, except, sorry, uh, I'm not a native speaker, uh, uh, has a special opportunity to make accessibility a reality for everyone in all areas. An area of over 100 hectares, formerly used by a brewery, the so-called Reininghaus grounds, is now to become a new district with 20 neighborhoods, a central park, and a sports park. Around 
12,000 people should make their home there in the future. After more than 10 years of preparation, the implementation phase has begun. The city of Graz sees this unique project as a great opportunity to create a showcase of accessibility. Especially here, the principle should apply that an early consideration of accessibility should avoid expensive adaptions in retrospect. However, we are not just talking about barrier-free building standards, but also about the chance to do more. Inclusive educational institutions, barrier-free waste disposal, fully accessible infrastructure, including all playgrounds and sports facilities, and of course, the barrier-free barrier use of public transport. The nearby University of Applied Sciences, UANEUM, also offers the opportunity to integrate barrier-free thinking and building into the curriculum, for example, in the field of industrial design. The clear commitment to these projects should not only be demonstrated by the fact that a large delegation of the City of Graz has been present during the conference. A resolution will also be passed very soon by the City Senate of the City of Graz. And we are very grateful to Mr. Essel for allowing us to rely on the expertise of the Essel Foundation. Very soon, he and our mayor will also hold talks with the investors to implement accessibility in all neighborhoods and projects in the new district. We are confident that even the private investors can be won over for a showpiece project that will reflect the spirit of this conference. We want to make Graz the most livable city in Europe. This can only succeed if the city is built by everyone for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heidfogel. We are really excited about this um, possibility to cooperate closer with the city of Graz in the future. So, it's now time to, to wrap it all up. Uh, these are three days, and I would like to give you a, a very brief summary of what happened in this last three days. It was at such a speed, at such an intensity, that uh, I'm, I'm still grasping to, to get everything that has been done and, and achieved in the, in the last three days. I'm just walking through some of the elements that came to my mind while, while I was sitting here on stage. We experienced the accessibility trail thanks to Access Israel. We had more than 220 people who actively sat on stage or participated in one, were presented in one way or the other. We had the impact transfer program uh, thanks to Ashoka that did us jointly with us. We had, a, we had 30 exhibitors. We had the graphic facilitator, Petro Blitzke, accompanying uh, us for three days in many sessions. We had the social media, uh, thanks to, to Martin Habacher and the, and the people from Zeitecht who achieved to uh, have uh, a video produced for all of these 75 uh, innovative practices and policies that were on stage, some, some of them even hours before they were, uh, they were here, they already, it was on Facebook and Twitter. Um, we had Zeitgeist who did all the logistics on the ground, thanks to them. We had the, f the first performance of the Zero Project hymn and the unveiling of the Zero Project artwork. We had the award ceremony uh, with 75 people coming here on stage and receiving the award. We had some 700 participants here, if we count everyone, including an, an 80 people choir that uh, joined us yesterday. We had sign language interpretation. Thanks to everyone, it was such an engaged commitment and a work of, of all of you. Thank you. I think you need a special applause. For that. We had captioning and subtitling in all of the three rooms, which was remotely done. Uh, most of the people not being in the room, but being in Ireland. Um, so I think it was a, a great conference, and it wouldn't have been great without of you, without your willingness to come, to participate, to speak to each other on eye level, and to create a kind of the, the, the Zero Project community that we are really happy to develop into the future. So thank you, everyone. I'm not finished, but I think you also deserve an applause at this stage. Yeah, and one final look into the, into the future. 
may I have the, the last slide of this conference? Or not? Ah, yes. Uh, so the topic of next year's Zero Project, which we start in the next weeks, is independent living and political participation, being one of the four topics that we cover in a cycle. Uh, so we encourage all of you to come in once again to join us with nominating, with sharing ideas, with sharing your expertise on what the most outstanding innovative practices and innovative policies are uh, that work on people making people more independent and, and making them more politically active. So please come forward. It's all about you sharing your ideas and your expertise with us so we can create this great conference next year again. And unofficially, we have already been told a date. It's not official, but you can somehow note this down in your calendar. The next Zero Project conference will be from the 20th to the 22nd of February 2019. Thanks, everybody. Have a safe trip home. And uh, thank you for everything. Education, employment, accessibility, independent living, and political participation, innovative practices, and innovative policies, a network of civil society. If you see me, take me. Just the way I am We could change the world Because we understand If we both are part of The same society I could be I could be me Zero barriers Zero Thank you.